Beam down smoke. Hello everybody and welcome back to a brand new video. Now this video is going to be covering five more investments for 2020 and beyond. And the reason for this is because the market has actually changed a lot since my previous video. I was actually not planning to make another one of these top five investment videos, but because of the market changes and some of the other factors I've analyzed recently, this is probably going to be a good idea just because these are going to be a lot different than the previous videos. If you guys do wanna check out those previous videos, those are still valid investments. This one is just going to make sure it doesn't rehash any of those investments. So let's go ahead and move into this video with one quick word from a sponsor. So the sponsor for this video is going to be CSGO Station. They are a Discord server and they also have a really big pro, which is the fact that they are ran by a very strong management. So a really cool thing about the server is that it's actually like a hub for all things CSGO related. There's going to be stuff for investors, for traders, for players, and for even gamblers, which is something I don't personally condone, but if you're into that, then it is available there. And also, of course, you're going to be able to do some content creation related stuff. So if you're a content creator and you want to network a little bit, there's going to be some options there for you. So I think it's a really cool little hub. It's definitely not like a generic Discord server that you'd normally see. This one has a lot of different features, and if you want to just kind of jump into a general CSGO hub that's going to allow you to access a lot of interesting features, then I would definitely check it out using the link in the description below. So anyway, a really cool place, and I totally recommend it. Check it out. All right, guys, let's move on to the video. So the number five spot for this list is going to be a little bit more in-depth variant of what I talked about in the previous video. This one's going to be for cases in general, so I'm actually going to be talking about just like literally every case, and I think every single case is going to be a good investment at some point in time. So cases in general, just they have a lot of hype behind them, which is really good. It allows them to change hands and have a lot of volume trades. Now, the reason having a high volume is good for cases is because this is going to allow them to move out of the hands of hoarders and it's going to move into the general community's hands a lot more easily and a lot more smoothly, which is going to allow them to rise a lot better. Now, a really cool thing about the cases is that they're pretty much just going to be a fairly safe option. I honestly don't think any investment ever is going to be perfectly 100% safe, but I would consider these more safe than other investments just simply because these things have just performed well overall in general and pretty much any case is going to be able to do well given enough time. The reason I say that any case is a good investment is because it really just depends on the term of your investment. So for example, if you were to buy into Prisma cases, those ones are fairly recent and they are very cheap, which is nice. That means they have a higher return on investment. The problem with them is that they are new, which means they're not going to rise for a while until they get added to the rare drop pool. In general though, they are still pretty safe, and if you are looking to buy into something cool, definitely check out cases. Pretty much anything is a good option, just the older case you buy is going to be more short term, and the newer case you buy is going to be more long term. So if you keep that in mind, you're going to be able to get some good profit off these cases. Again, I think any case is solid, but I would definitely recommend as a top three the Phoenix case and the Chroma 3 case and the Shadow case, all of which I think are going to be great options. They're kind of in that nice sweet spot where they're not too expensive and also not too cheap, so they're in a good spot. Now, the number four spot for this list is going to be moving on to another generalized thing, and that's going to be Shattered Web. So Shattered Web in general is just going to be good. The main thing here is that it's really hard to kind of demonstrate to you how well these are going to do in the future, and it's kind of one of those things where it's just get onto them now and kind of throw them into a storage unit, kind of forget about them, and you're going to be able to make some good money in the future. These things are just going to be really solid. Pretty much every operation skin that's come out of a collection has done well in the past, and that's only going to continue for the future as these things get more rare with time. Obviously, Shattered Web was a pretty highly invested operation, so it's going to be a little bit longer than more people would usually expect, but I still think it's going to be a solid option, and a lot of these skins are going to go pretty crazy in the future. I especially think the stuff that I've talked about in the past, like the Gold Web Foils and the Desert Eagle Emerald Drumming Gunder, are still going to be very good options, but they're just going to be solid in general, because they're only going to get more rare by the day, and of course are only going to get more desirable as their price goes up. So a very good thing there, and something that I would definitely recommend watching at the least. I understand I've talked about Shattered Web a lot, but that's just because I want to give you guys a lot of warnings on the Shattered Web stuff, because it's definitely something that I know I'm going to get comments about. Oh, you know, you told me to invest in these and I didn't and now I regret not buying into them because these are just going to be really solid in the future. It's something that is just kind of a very clear shot and as long as CSGO doesn't do something insane or, you know, very off color for what they would normally do, then I think these are just going to be a really solid straight shoot and something that's going to make a lot of money in the future. And that brings us to the number three spot on our list, which is going to go to high tiers in general. So these are pretty interesting because they have been rising a lot recently, which means a lot of them could potentially have hit peaks. The nice thing about high tiers is that they are still going to be pretty solid profit generators because a lot of the high tiers are generally going to be old items or items from rare collections. So some of the high tiers that I want to actually spotlight are going to be the Fire Serpent, Glock Fade, and Deagle 
plays, for example, all of which have performed amazingly over the previous few months and have risen quite a lot. A lot of these have actually gone up hundreds of dollars worth and just even if you owned one skin alone out of any of these. So I think they're just really solid options and something that you could probably just buy into and wait enough time and you make money off of it. It's a really classical investment, not really anything too crazy out there. So I think it's good for people that have a lot of money. Obviously, I don't like recommending higher tier and more expensive stuff a lot because a lot of people don't have the money to buy into them. And I think it's better to kind of give more general, cheaper stuff that a lot of people could buy into. But I still think high tiers are really, really solid and it's kind of hard to ignore them, especially with the recent price manipulation that has happened on them on buff specifically, which is actually a uh, allotted a lot of them to retain higher prices, which I think is actually really cool. Like I say with the Op Asthma, for example, these are kind of just things that you're going to buy into and make kind of slow profit over a course of time, and in general are going to make a lot of profit just as an overall. So if you own these in your inventory and you have them for a while, you can make good money on them. And I would recommend those ones that I mentioned before, the Glock Fade, the Deagle Blaze, and of course the Fire Serpent as really good options. And I also wanted to go ahead and point out another thing if anyone wants to ask about this, and that's going to be the Op Lightning Strike. So I did recommend the Op Lightning Strike a little while back, said it was going to hit about $200 in about six months. My prediction was a little bit off because Shattered Web sort of offset the markets, but after a, about eight months or so, the item was able to reach $200, so it actually met my prediction. I was pretty shocked, actually. I don't usually make predictions, so that one's actually pretty cool, and I think that the Op Lightning Strike has already pretty much hit a pretty solid peak, and I don't think it's going to go too much higher from here, but something that is definitely possible and maybe something to keep your eye on as well if you're going to be in that high tier area. As some general knowledge for high tiers in order to make the most efficient investments, make sure that you're you're looking for ones that have float caps. I did mention float caps in a previous video and how to invest in float caps recently. So if you want to go ahead and check that out, that's going to explain why they're more rare and why they're going to be stronger investments. So definitely go check that out if you want more information on that. But a lot of these high tier items and just older items from collections are going to be solid going forward just because as CSGO continues to release more stuff, obviously the older stuff is going to just rise in price naturally because it's naturally going to be a lot more rare and a lot harder to obtain. Now one further thing that I wanted to talk about with the high tiers and something that I think you should also watch out for is of course going to be the celebration period slash the Chinese market. So if you watched my recent video that I'm not going to name specifically just because it's been weird with demonetization on YouTube and I don't want to really mess with that. So anyway, I did make a recent video on this topic a little bit more in depth and basically it's talking about a celebration period where basically after a major world event has been recovered from that more money is put into the economy as people sort of begin to celebrate. And I think with the Chinese market, this is something that could definitely happen. And I did talk about it a little bit more in depth. It's, it's still a lot of a theory, but I still think it's something that's going to affect high tiers greatly once a lot of this stuff is over. So anyway, with that being said, that's what I'm going to go ahead and recommend you watch as sort of your reading material for this class. And if you want to go ahead and check those out, great. It's going to give you a lot better idea of how to invest into high tiers. And that brings us to our number two spot. So this is going to be one that I haven't really mentioned in depth as a really solid investment. It's something I've sort of beat around the bush with with my knife investment video, but it's one that I want to hit a little bit more specifically just as investments specifically. So this is going to be butterfly knives, karambits, shadow web knives, and then gem knives specifically. So all of these kind of in the same sort of area. So the main thing here is I do think that specifically, for me at least, I think that shadow web knives are going to see a re-release. I think it's a little odd that they didn't get a re-release already, and I think it's something we're probably going to see in the future. So with these knives, I would tread very carefully. It's definitely the riskier one of the bunch, but I still think these have generated a lot of profit because obviously they haven't seen a re-release and they're just an exceedingly rare knife to obtain, especially the skeleton knives. These ones have just been generating an incredible amount of money recently, especially on buff. And if you want to go ahead and buy into one of these, definitely a good option as long as you're willing to take on the risk that they could have a re-release in the future. Obviously, there is also the small chance that they don't have a re-release. It's just going to be unlikely for them not to see a re-release. So if you do want to buy into these, Skeleton Knife is going to be the best one. And just again, make sure you're going to buy and sell in a pretty short time period and you don't want to risk it too much. Now with the Butterfly Knives, these are just going to be solid in general. These have just continued to do insane. They've skyrocketed and just done some really crazy stuff. I've looked at the prices of these and I've just personally been shocked at how much they've actually risen. Even the really low tier skins and the really old skins have just continued to do well and have even doubled and tripled in price, which I think is absolutely insane. These have just been total profit generators and they've been able to make a lot of people a lot of money. So if you're going to look into a butterfly knife or a knife in general, that's the one that I would definitely pinpoint. Now as for the Karambit, this one is of course just an iconic knife. With the release of the Talon knife, I actually think the Karambit gained a lot more popularity because people preferred it over the Talon knife. 
and I think the Crambit is still a superior good to the Talon Knife, so it's something I would also make sure you watch out for. Do keep in mind that the Crambit is still available in a lot of cases, so it is a lot more obtainable than some of these other knives. Obviously, the older finishes, like the Fade finishes, are going to be better. Alright guys, moving on to the number one spot for this list, this is going to be Major Stickers. A little bit more specific than my previous video that talked about Major Stickers, because I think there is a little bit more information to be put into them right now. So one major thing with Major Stickers is obviously the future investment potential of Rio, or whatever tournament organizer ends up doing it, because obviously there's been a lot of interesting in real life consequences that we've had to deal with, which is of course pushed back to the Rio Major. So with that, there's going to of course be the Rio Major Sticker sale, and the sticker release. Pieces. I do think that Rio is going to have a pretty decent sticker design. Here are some mock-ups. I don't know if they're going to be this good, but obviously they could be pretty close because of the background of the ESL1 Rio logo. So with that said, I do think that Rio is a potential for some good profits. Obviously check out Navi stickers. Those are going to be your safest bets. With Rio, whenever it happens, obviously just go with the safer stickers like Navi, like I just mentioned, or of course you could go with some teams that are probably aren't going to see future stickers. Like for example, Dream Eaters is probably not going to see a sticker release at Major. So that's one that you could look out for. Virtus Pro, of course, has a new logo design and some of the other teams have new logo designs, which could of course impact their pricing during the Rio Major sticker sale. So of course, looking out for stuff like that. And I think it's going to be a really good one going forward. And as for other major stickers, definitely look at some of the underpriced ones, like for example, from Cologne 2016, Boston 2018, and Atlanta 2017. Many of these are still underpriced. Some of them have hit peaks, some of them haven't. You're just going to have to really look into it more specifically and figure out which ones you want to invest into. I did, of course, invest into a couple of those Boston 18 hollows recently, and also a couple of the other stickers from Kedavi 2019. So make sure to check that out in my previous Investment Odyssey video if you want to see those more in depth. But that's just generally the majors I would look out for because they're ones that haven't really been manipulated too much by this recent sticker manipulation that's been occurring pretty much across the entire sticker market. So make sure you're looking for the ones that are still underpriced and not ones that have been manipulated. That's ones that are going to make the most return on investment on. Now for one really interesting one that I have not mentioned in any form before and one that I want to bring just new to the table is going to be autographs specifically. So I do want to shout out Zonix and Foxtail in my Discord server, some really, really cool people. And they've actually been watching autographs very specifically. They're really, really into an autograph investing and you can definitely trust their opinion when it comes to autograph investing these guys have told me that the best ones are going to be is on Taurus Searson, and of course, Brolin. So these are all really star players that have just been performing amazingly recently. Centaurus, of course, has just been doing insane on LAN. Brolin, of course, has just been a really star player for Fnatic and has done a lot for them. He's had some pretty insane plays, and his sticker's been doing really solid as well recently. And then Searson, of course, as of right now, is actually the player of the week and has also been performing really well. So those are the ones that Zonix and Foxtail have really specifically mentioned to me and have been showing me with really good statistics for each of these players. And of course, their autograph stickers have been doing phenomenally as well. Brolin's is already up to a dollar just in paper, and it's one of the most expensive ones from Katowice 2019, so a really cool one there. Autographs are really cool because a lot of them aren't too manipulated, and a lot of them have just been rising because of the player successes, and it's kind of a really good testament to how watching esports and engaging with CSGO can bring you a lot of profit if you know what you're doing, so definitely go ahead and check those out. And that's going to be the end of this investment video. And that's going to cut the end of the video, so as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, be sure to check out CSGO Station if you're interested in a really cool general CSGO hub that can bring you a lot of interesting tools for for engaging with CSGO. And of course, be sure to check out the channel and subscribe. And if you want to go ahead and click that notification bell to make sure you get the fastest and best investment advices anywhere else on YouTube, be sure to use that as well. And also be sure to check out the like button and give me a like if you enjoyed the video and if it helped you out. And of course, be sure to check out some of my affiliate links if you want to support the channel more directly. And of course, the Discord and the Reddit links, which are also going to help me quite a lot by growing my beautiful community. So anyway, guys, thank you so much for checking out this video. I really thank you for taking time out of your day to come check it out with me, and I will see you all next time. Peace.